In a previous video, we opened up this silhouette here and we coloured it in with some of the default swatches from Adobe Illustrator. And we can just see it here by pulling up the swatches palette and we can go to the default ones, choose something such as history and add it to our swatches and just go for it. This is a great way to um, find colours and apply colours if you aren't too fussy about what you're choosing, just want some colours to show an idea. However, you've probably got something very specific in mind. Maybe it's a colour scheme from WGSN. Maybe it's something that you have made yourself. So we're going to do that now. We're going to create a colour scheme from an image. Then we're going to apply it to this silhouette here. So to start with, let's go to File, New. Just create a new artboard. The size doesn't really matter. And I'm going to put an image in, which I found previously, which is this one. And it's of a little C scene with the colour scheme already there. Now, you might have got this from somewhere else. You might have created it with Adobe Colour. It doesn't really matter. So the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to just go and delete most of my colour scheme which I've got built here to the default for the swatches. So just click on the red, hold down shift and click on the purple. Down the bottom here we've got a trash can, so click that. Don't want to delete them, yes, and I've wiped them all off. Now this is quite a drastic start, you might be thinking why you're doing this, but it will make sense in a few minutes. So first thing to do is create a new group. So new colour group, I'm going to call this basic colour scheme. Right. So, what do I do now? How do I fill this with colours? I go over here to my side panel and I choose my eyedropper tool, hover over the first little bar and click colour. Now you'll see that the fill here has gone the same colour, so we've now picked it up. So I go back to my swatches window, select that colour group I've created and click on the new swatches button just to the left of the trash can. This menu here appears. Now if we already knew the CMYK or RGB values, we could just have jumped straight to this by just typing them in here. But I'm using the eyedropper tool because it's a bit faster for me and I don't know the values. So we've added one swatch, which is the other colour. I'm going to do this again. So we've already got the eyedropper tool selected. Go to the green, left click. We see the fills picked it up. So we select our colour group and just drop it in. I'm going to do that again. Just select the group, new piece. And again, select the group, new piece. And last time with a slight grey, select new. And there we are. Oops. Might just click the one piece then. So select the last one, go in the group, and drop. So we've now done that. Now it's worth remembering that I could have just taken my um, eyedropper, gone anywhere on the image, and picked up any colour from the picture. You should be able to see that as I'm doing this, the little fill on the left is changing colour. So I could just save this now and I could carry on to um, colouring in and painting the illustration, but I'm going to show you a little, little trick which I find really useful. So if we select the colour scheme here, down the bottom, we option appears, edit or apply colour group. So I click that and we see a extended whoops, um, swatches group, so it's recolor artwork. We can do a drop down here, and we see various harmony mills built in. Now we see the first swatch is that first green we've got there. So all these are riffing off that first swatch. So I'm going to choose this one, which is triad. Rename the group as triad, and then click new color group. And it's just taken it, taken it and saved it to that. Now, I want to do something, another one, so I'm going to choose, let's have a look, high contrast three, looks interesting. Yep, I'm going to have that. And I'm purposely going to make a mistake now by just saying add. Now, what I've done is I've added it without renaming it. So I've got two of them called triad. Not a problem, just hover your mouse over the text here, double left click, and you can rename it high contrast. So that is nice and simple. I can go forward doing lots of these. Um, I can create other groups with other first swatches, but you can imagine um, it's good to play with. It's quite easy. So I'm going to click OK. 
Do I want to save changes? Yes, I do. And those other variants have now dumped into my swatches library. So you can see what I'm now doing is building up not just a color scheme, but maybe a variety of different color schemes. Um, I'm quite happy with this now, and I want to use it over here. So how to do that? Now, firstly, on the top right of the swatches panel, you've got a drop down, and we can do it save library as ASE. Now that's quite an important one to do because that will mean it, we can use it in lots of different programs, which is, and by the way, the um, ASE Adobe Swatch Exchange, what it stands for. Now I'm going to go to my garments folder, which I'm using for all these examples. I'm going to call this Storm. Storm set, that's a good one. So click save. And click OK for that because we're doing that later on. And that's now saved as a set. Let's go back to our illustration here. So the first thing to do is we want to get all of those um, colors and bring them here for us to use. So Windows swatches, make sure this is available. And currently we don't see anything useful there. On the swatches library at the bottom, we can open other library. I'll show you about this again. It's at the very, very bottom, open other library. Go to our desktop and our garments folder. That is where storm set is saved. So I'm going to just go to that, click open, and here we have it. Our storm set is ready to go. Now it will just click on them. They add to my swatches group. I can then close it down and they're ready to go. So now I want to close in. It's just like in previously done. Select the direct selection tool. Select your piece, and I'm going to say hmm, dark blue because they're jeans. And the belt, I'm going to have a purple belt. The knee pads, I'm going to do as green because I'm using this kind of contrast. And we can keep going forward and coloring in just like on any other piece. Maybe if we zoom in, we can see more details. We can maybe select the belt there and have you know, green belt loops. This reminds me of maybe the Joker from Batman might wear this. Um, but anyway, so we've now created a color scheme and we have applied it to an illustration. And that's as simple as it is. However, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is why ASE is so good. Now, apart from the fact we can just recall this at will, so if we're working on a large project, we can keep the color scheme over all our illustrations rather than do this over and over again, we can also use it in other programs. So I'm going to open up Photoshop, as I've got here. So I've got this image, and I'm going to do something which is going to be just an example of how we can use it. So over here, we have swatches. I'm going to pull this out, so working it again. And I'm going to go on the drop down here and say replace swatches. So the swatches that we have already are one color, and get rid of them and bring in a whole new color set. So once again, navigate desktop garments and choose storm set. Click open and you'll see that those are all the colors we had previously. They are arranged a bit different, but don't worry about that. Those are the colors. So I quite like the um, this last one we had, which is that uh, high contrast one. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna select, let's choose this kind of dark color. So edit, fill, and it's foreground color because it's been selected, okay. Let's chuck a blend in, let's say color. So now we've done that. Now let's put some text in, so a little text tool, maybe just some writing up here, and let's call it um, summer. Now you can't read that because it's very, because it's used the foreground color again. Let's choose, yeah, that green, and let's make this a little bit bigger. So yeah, there we have it. So we have created a color scheme. We have saved it as an ASC for use everywhere in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Creative Suite. We have colored in a garment, and then we've gone into Photoshop and used the same color scheme or somewhere else. So that is how to do a very basic color swatch color scheme in Adobe Creative Cloud.